Wake up to Febru any at Subway. Try the bacon, egg, and cheese on toasty flatbread. Or get any of your other favorite breakfast footlongs as a $5 footlong. Starting at 7 a.m. Hurry in for Febru any. Subway. Eat fresh. The BS Report is a free-flowing conversation that occasionally touches on mature subjects. First of all, this is the BS Report with Bill Simmons. It might be cool, I don't know. And if it's not, I don't care. The BS Report with Bill Simmons. Bill Simmons works for ESPN. He's also named the sports guy, and he writes a comical sports column. He must be a popular dude. The BS Report. It's got a real dirty sound. Like a rusty steak knife cutting through a well aged steak. No. 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 Here's Bill Simmons. Yeah. Welcome to the Bass Report. Taping this on a Tuesday afternoon. It's running Wednesday. My guest and I will be in the air flying to Orlando for the All-Star Game. We're going to talk to legends and stuff. Apparently there's legends that go to the All-Star Game. But now he's the reality czar and we're going to talk reality. If you don't like reality TV, you're probably not going to like this podcast. We don't care. Dave Jacoby, what's happening? If you like reality TV, you might not like this podcast either, let's be honest. No, you'll like the podcast probably. if you like reality TV. Probably, probably. Bachelor. Um, well, so we got Bachelor going on. We got Jersey Shore. We got The Challenge. Yeah. And we have... America's uh, fifth professional sport. America's fifth sport. And then finally, uh, one more. We Jersey Survivor. Shore, Survivor. Okay. Survivor. Let's start with The Bachelor. All right. We're down to three. One yes. of the three is divorced. It's the furthest a divorced woman has ever gone. Uh, I feel like this should be a bigger story. Yeah, she's like the Jeremy Lin of The Bachelor. She really is. No one's picking up on this at all. It, I, first of all... <laughs> you, you seem stunned. You, I, you had a lot I of am. Words. I'm stunned. I, <laughs> With, you all right, buddy? Because usually you get to... I could see them getting the hometown date. It's almost like when George Mason made the final four. Yeah. But then you meet the parents and the pa- and they have the heart to heart with the dad and the dad's like, uh, yeah, you know, and I blame myself for the first marriage <laughs> and what happened there. And at that point, the bachelor's like, you know what, I'm gonna go with one of the ones who's not married. Yeah. And, and, then, right. and then he like, she's like, I want to take you up to my room. Which, the, the the home visits are always weird. Then she brings him up, always weird. Brings him up to her room and she's got probably twenty to thirty pillows on her bed, which is a red flag right there. I don't like over pillowing beds. That's a big problem of mine. It's a bad, yeah, bad too thing. many pillows on the bed. Bad and thing. then and then she does what every bachelorette feels they need to do during this episode, is profess the love of, of the bachelor. Well, because it's a big to thing, you have to open up to the bachelor. Yeah, because you have, that you have to be way open for love. Because that way, then when he sends you home, you really cry in the limo yeah, because you've opened yeah, up at yeah, that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of comments about the home down date. First of all, because now, now that my daughter is six and a half and about 15 years away from being on yeah, the show. 12 years from The Bachelor, yeah. Yeah. So I, I try to put myself in the position of the dads, which is something I do often. But So let's say I have this guy come to my house and there's a camera crew with him. Yeah. I have a lot of questions about this before we even start. Why? What do they stand to gain by allowing this production in their house? Well, I think you have to sign off on it when you agree to be on The Bachelor. Okay, I think so there's a checklist of 40 things, and it's like, do you have an STD? No. Are your parents willing to have us film when there's four left? <laughs> yes. <laughs> like it's it just it's on the checklist. Yes. So, I, so this guy comes in in the camera crew, and he wants to potentially marry my daughter and the questions are always like uh so what's your connection like with my daughter you know i would be asking like so what are the other girls like yeah what do they look like can i can i have your tax return from the past four years please i wouldn't even get to that i'd be like <laughs> so who'd you pick so who, so courtney's a model how old is she 28 interesting why did why did yeah, a model what's make your the final four her like yeah you flip it around on him <laughs> yes. and now he's like now he's in a position to be like well i don't really like her she's just kind of hot so it's all a looks thing with courtney yeah. and you just go through and you just basically like i would break the guy down and i would want him to leave saying i can't marry that 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 girl her dad will make my life miserable yeah, and that would be my goal Another thing that he ends up doing, he always sort of like tacitly asks permission to get engaged, but but like he's always like, well, you know, we've got a really strong connection. I think that what we could build on is a really beautiful relationship moving forward. And like basically, the subtext is let's flip, hold on, flip this around. Pretend I'm the dad and you're the bachelor, and go through that whole charade with me. 
Uh, uh, nice to meet you, Mr. Simmons. It's nice to meet you, I'm, Dave. I'm just really glad that you opened up, up uh, that you're home to us. I feel really comfortable here. I feel like I've got a strong connection. I could really just fit in with you guys. Dave, I have some questions for you. Uh, sure, sure. So are you really going to propose to my daughter at the end of this? Me and your daughter have a very strong connection, and um, and this process has been crazy for me. And it's been crazy for both of us, but, but um, I just really, really, really appreciate spending time with your daughter. Dave... It just seems a little weird to me from my end that you're dating all these women and you're narrowing them down and voting them off and then there's two left and you let one go and then you pick my daughter and then you immediately want to get married to her. This is a show where 19 out of the last 21 people haven't ended up getting married. Don't you feel like this is a little weird? Well, uh, Mr. Simmons, with all due respect, uh, I may or may not pick your daughter. I mean, there's there's probably well, then why are you here? There's probably like a twenty five percent chance that I pick her, <laughs> and uh, you know what? She's also kind of crazy. Well, I know that we tried to talk her out of being on the show. How about this? Why don't we skip dinner and you could just go now, and then just vote her off, and we won't tell her this ever happened. Do I get like a to go thing? Like I would a Tupperware? just if I'm the dad, I just want to drive these guys out of my daughter's life. I don't want her to is marry he, Ben, the the uh, guy, the Sonoma wine guy who went on a reality show to find a wife. This is going to be her husband. Twice went on a reality show to find a wife. Twice, yeah, yeah it's the yeah, second yeah, time. Yeah, it's the second time around. The uh, I wrote in the GRTFL column, which uh, you should check out sometime. I read it every the, week. Uh, that the I think the dad should flip it. I think the dad should say, like, look, I want to tell you about this girl's history. Like, she's been arrested four times. Uh, she's but, been but in jail. That, the only thing like, is, like, like, I really, I really want you to consider who I she really that. is. I read that, but the only problem is, you you have to do it in a way where you you don't lose your daughter in the process because they're going to watch it on TV. You're not going to lose your daughter. She's going to be back in six months. <laughs> six months, but yeah. it could be like it could be like one of those Jenny Gump six months. Where she's like <laughs> yeah, standing yeah. on a balcony, like having <laughs> coke behind her. And just That's fair. could be bad. That's fair. Uh, yeah, it's it's not a good place for your daughter to end up. No. I don't want my daughter to end up on any reality. Like, all right, well, top five worst reality shows your daughter could be at. Number one, Teen Mom. Oh yeah, which which I never ever watched on principle until recently. I'd like to talk to you. Number about two, later. Bad Girls Club. That that's probably number one. Over Teen Mom. Teen Mom, you're having a baby. Bad Girls Club, you're you're doing worse than that. I know you don't worse watch the than show. Th- oh yeah, oh yeah, it's it's bad. Uh, it's really the, bad. I'd like to hear the listeners weigh in on that one. Yeah. Well, they're definitely one and two. They're like the LeBron and Wade of this conversation. Yep. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm, I don't even best know one what to, for a daughter being. I think Survivor. No, way wrong. Why? All the, the Project Runway or those Top Chef shows, those people are really talented. There's like oh, legit talented people that can are, use I don't feel like those, those are reality as, shows, They can use though. those as resume reels. Those are reality competition shows. Yeah. Well, I mean, Survivor is too. We can have this argument some other time. That is true. I guess you... you well, but yeah. th- there is reality elements to Survivor. You got to live together. You're stuck in a house. Yeah. Anyway. Um, all right. So, Bachelor... Um, Courtney, the model, who you've been chronicling week after week, calling yes. her the Bill Belichick of reality, the, one she's, of the great minds of all time. She's the greatest strategic mind of our generation. She really upped it a notch this week. She had basically a fake wedding with vows. It, it's not even that. She kind of cried. I felt like she was, was she crying? Was, no, I don't think she has the, the emotional range to actually cry, but she might have faked some sort of crying thing. But like, I just want to explain the scenario is... They're in her hometown. They're at this beautiful park where she had one of her first photo shoots because she yeah. always has to you know, remind the audience and Ben that she is a model. And if, and if he were to marry her, he would be marrying a model. Right. And they're in this beautiful park. And she says, huh, you know, like, funny, I've always imagined myself kind of getting married here. You know, it, it's very rustic. She used the word rustic a lot. Rustic is good. I'm not sure she sounds knows like what it a, means. Yeah, 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 sounds yeah, like a homey yeah. word. Yeah, she's like, yeah. I always saw myself getting married here, and huh, what's that over there? Yeah. A, I don't know, a, a complete wedding setup with about 50 chairs. Yeah. Oh, and and there's a guy there who, who may or may not happen to marriage. Oh, what's this in my purse? Pen and paper. Why don't we just write ourselves some vows? Yeah. Uh, and you know what else? Uh, and then he's like, oh, this is weird. And, you know, do you have any he rings? He liked it, though. He likes everything. Here, I'll tell you why he liked it. Because they had sex in the water. Because they had sex in the water. Yeah. And because she's a model. He's all in after that. I have a, uh, I have a good story about a friend of ours who we may or may not know. Um, he may or may not appear in this podcast sometimes. And he once met a young lady at a nightclub, a very attractive young lady. And, uh, and she says, he says, oh, what, like, it, you know, they inevitably get to the conversation, like, oh, what do you do? 
Mm. And she's like, I'm in the model business. Oh. And he's like, oh, I just I just met a model at a nightclub, and she's digging me. This is awesome. Yeah. And then, um, so we we always remember it as like, oh, he met a model. That's like a big thing for like a guy, like you know, dating a model or something. And then as uh, they subsequently like conversated and followed up, he found out that she said, I'm in the marble business. Like she sells countertops and such. Oh no. And that completely changes the dynamic of the whole thing. And I feel like Courtney is using this to her advantage. On Ben. The whole model thing. Where does the model thing begin and end? Like, what if you were a hand model? Could you get the model Chiron, or would it have to say hand model? Hand model, for sure. What about... So, if it's a specific body part, the body part has to be in there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Even plus size has to be in there. Well, we think they had sex in the water. In one of the greatest moments in Bachelor. I was out on The Bachelor, and then I heard about it. It was on my TiVo, and I got sucked back in. Oh, this season's been good. You can't be on The Bachelor. I was out. My wife was out. She stopped tweeting. She really? quit after you two. You stopped writing your wife's tweets during the Bachelor. I type my wife's tweets. <laughs> oh, okay. I type the oh, tweets. Oh, oh, okay, okay, sorry. The joke structure of those is fantastic. I she know, she may, she, she tells it. me what to write. And I <laughs> type them. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, no, I really do type them though. Like she, because she didn't even want to tweet, and I promised, I promised uh, who the. F- Some one of one of her friends was like, I love when I love watching. Yeah. The, 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 so she, her heart's just not in anymore. She had her second kid. That was it. She's out of comedy at that point. <laughs> what about in the, the skinny dip thing brought it back? Well, the skinny dip brought it back, and not just that, but really opened up a lot of questions about, you know, it's not easy to have sex while you're treading water in water, or so I've heard. Well, he was he was firmly planted. I believe they're in like a you know the. Uh, well, he had his feet uh, under him. Yeah, it was... seemed like they were swimming though. No, I think that's impossible. I don't even think fish can do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's impossible. That didn't happen. He was planted. I've seen the tape at least 20, 25 times. Here's my take. I think it was an attempt at sex. And it just, because of the water, it's wet, it's dark out. Like, yeah. kind of was in the general vicinity, and they kind of did, but they didn't. And now he's just like, I got to finish that. I got fin- to finish what, what happened <laughs> what in the water. Got to get that done. I got to. It's all I'm thinking about. So he's on these dates with those other girls. These girls are like, yeah, my grandfather, dad, was eight. And he's just thinking like, I got to get to that final three with Courtney. It's the only reason she's made it this far. I mean, let me just final go- three. That's when they have sex. It's the best episode in, on television. <laughs> it is a good episode. It they get the key episode. and they're like, hey, should we take yeah. the sweep for that? Yes, or, I think we should. Or not. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it's, a, it's borderline weird. It's like, it's, it's something strange. Like, the girls feel a lot of pressure, I feel like, to, uh, you know, have a good time in the, in the fantasy suite. It's, it's a lot. What was that HBO Bunny Ranch show? Oh, yeah. I don't it's know. like I the distant, it's called. distant cousin of the H- cat house. Cat house. Yeah, it's yeah. distant cousin of cat house. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Should we take the fantasy suite with the <laughs> See, cameras Chris, of the wall? Chris Harrison should be replaced by Dennis of the cat house for that one episode. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, would you like the Valentine suite, or would you would you go? Would you want to go for our jungle theme? <laughs> I love it. I like when uh, it, the girls' reactions are different. They either have a look on their face like. I don't love sex, but I'm going to do this because this is my best way to get in with Ben. Or you get those girls who are just like, I love sex. I'm going to, I can't for wait. This for I've been waiting, waiting for this for a while and yeah. I'm going to let loose. Yeah, it's and it's a, one or the other, but you can see the look every time. It's a watershed moment. It's, it's a, a big water, one. It's a watershed moment. But then I was thinking like from the bachelor standpoint, let's say he hooks up with all three in like span of nine days. It's a pretty strong nine days. Yeah. It's a pretty good nine days. So three really Probably attractive hasn't had women. Probably not run like that since like Cabo in in, in, in ninety two. Would you, would you want to have him first, second, or third, if you're the girl? Okay, just just I want you to repeat that hypothetical question that you just asked me that you want me to consider. If you're the girl, if I was the girl. would you want to be the first, second, or third hometown date? Let's say you had a ton of confidence in your sexual <laughs> prowess. Okay. Would okay. you want to be first, knowing that you were going to blow away the next two, or would you want to be third, leave the lasting impression? You, you want to be in the middle. You want to run the anchor leg. You want to run the anchor leg. You want to be in the middle, I think right? You want to run the anchor leg. Middle's bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's also like gymnastic judging. They yeah. don't give out tens early. You know what I mean? Yeah. You could, if you were first, you could really try to just wear them out. That'd be one play. 
make it so that he's you know he doesn't even want to think about sex for like. I think the producers days. when they make the schedule, I think they like book that in. I think there's like a day, a day. It's like a pitcher. They give him like a, a day of rest in between the dates. Well, they said because of the NBA lockout, they had to condense the schedule this <laughs> year. It's three the straight message. nights. Yeah, yeah. He had to go three and three nights. <laughs> the, uh, but it's like the part of the show that that just does not get enough. Just I just want to know more about the dates. Like, what do they do? Do they do? Does every what is the percentage of people that have sex on those? And what point, is it? Just cuddling. I think, here's what I think happens. And again, I have not been in the fantasy suite uh, with the Bachelorette or the Bachelor. Hmm. I believe what happens is is they wear their microphones and they sort of go in the door. They get that shot. And then they get like sort of the inside the. This is the, TV producer yes, Dave yeah, talking now. Oh, is, I like TV, TV producer, producer Dave. Kobe. And they get the like the the sh- oh look it's some, oh this this room is beautiful I love this place and they get the like they fill the glasses with the then champagne. you hear this <laughs> <laughs> and, then they get, and then they get the champagne glass click mm. and the kiss and then I think the producer says all right I'll take your mics there's no surveillance cameras in here we'll see you tomorrow morning oh. that's what I think happens that's my theory. And I because think it's that, ABC. If this is MTV, they'd have the one yeah, they'd they'd have the, Jersey yeah, Shore they, they, camera. They, they, they always forget about that. Yeah. Whoa, oh, that <laughs> totally, camera's that Totally one. forgot about that. Yeah. That's what I think happens. So I think that we'll never truly find out what, what happens in that fantasy suite. And I think they keep it that way on, on purpose. Well, it gets more interesting when it's a bachelorette. Then it's a girl of three times in nine days. You know. And then I don't, it's. I don't yeah. even, I don't even know. I don't even know. One, one of many reasons why you don't want your daughter as a bachelorette. Although we have Emily, the mom, the widowed mom. Yeah. Is going to be the next bachelorette. And that, yeah. Just once you got to have the polarizing Courtney the model type bachelorette. Yeah. I, I think she would make a perfect bachelorette. Yeah. That's the way to go with that show. Because yeah, I think I think the, the bachelorette needs to have a little edge. You know, like you yeah. can't just be like a sweetheart girl. You know, like I think you have to be kind of mean. I think you have to be like send some dudes home just for no reason. The bachelor, yeah. the ba- it's clear the Bachelorette is a, is a distant second as far as the Bachelor and well, the we Bachelorette know, franchise. Totally. And we know all the tricks now where instead of just having him vote somebody off, they have her be the date yeah, the, that he can vote off the at date the date. kick off, yeah. Because that was the personal trainer this year. Yeah. Who we were like, how is this girl still on the show? And why is she saying anything? And I, then we, we both noticed that that one girl knew she was going to get the voted off on the date, so she decided she, to she leave for left. personal yeah, reasons. Yeah. yeah, the only reason she was on the show was her here. grandmother. Yeah, that was a good play by her. So we were talking about Chris Harrison in the office, because this is this kind of stuff we talk about yeah, in the so Grayland we, offices. We spend 40% of our time. And uh, and Juliet, who works for us, was pretending not to hear, and that while her ears, she's a big Full bachelor, attention, bachelor, yeah. yeah, she's, yeah. And then yeah. finally she threw in it, but... Uh, there's a big disparity of opinion on whether Chris Harrison has a hard job or not. Wait, wait, who's on the other side of this? There were people on the other side. He's Joe the was easy, on the other side. He's got the easiest job, if not tell, if not in television in the world. Joe the world was on the other side of it. I'm, t- I'm, I'm telling you, Chris Harrison. If you counted, if you transcribed what he has said on camera, this, it's the same season, eight sentences, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean it's, 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 it's. You said it before. They should probably just have a robot do his job. Robot Chris Harrison would Robot be awesome. Chris Harrison would, would become they know he'd have his own spin off show. Here's our host, Chris Harrison C three twenty oh. It would be great. And, and not only that, think about his life. He works probably I don't know, forty five, fifty seconds a day. And then in the rest of his day is spent basically just get being carted around from beautiful country to beautiful country. Ladies, Ben, this is the final rose of the <laughs> It's one of his life. Just mix it up one one time, Chris. Ladies, Ben. Everybody, throw an extra word. Keep me on my toes, Chris Harrison. And then immediately on the heels of that is an interview with Ben. Ben saying, "This has probably been one of the hardest decisions of my life." I know. Like no, no, it hasn't, Ben. No, it hasn't. You knew you were taking Courtney from the moment you're in that water. Yeah. She grabbed her Johnson. That was it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, Courtney. What do you think? I think he definitely like Googled Courtney Day too. Oh, you think they can Google the dates? I mean, you can't keep this. There's got to be a no Google. There's got to be a no Google rule though. I'm no? sure there is, but like you cannot keep anybody away from the internet for three weeks. Did I? T- you came on the podcast a couple weeks ago, and I don't remember if we talked about it, so I'm just going to repeat it. Sure. My whole thing about, I do think it's a recipe for disaster for two reasons. Like, if you really want to study why they never end up together on this show, the first reason is that 
their first like six or seven dates are the most six or seven awesome dates you're ever going to have with a person. Yeah, always involve a helicopter and like shark you went, diving. Or you something. went to Thailand with your wife for your honeymoon. Yeah, we did. You had an take... awesome time. Yeah. That wouldn't have even cracked like the top 30 bachelor dates. They wouldn't have even made the cut. They wouldn't have aired it. Yeah, they would have been like, so you're just going to go to Thailand and you're going to be at a hotel? Yeah. What else are you going to do? Is there going to be a helicopter? No. No, no, no cliff diving? You're not going to no swim with sharks? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're, you're, you're not going to. Gonna... Is there going to be a 100 foot bungee jump? No. <laughs> no. We didn't put that in. No, they're probably just going to sit around the, uh, the reeds and yeah, books. We're just going yeah, to hang it's out, like, oh, watch yeah. movies. Is yeah, that all right? Yeah. Um, so you go from that high to then now you don't see each other for two months. Mm. And then now you're with each other again. And now it's like, hey, what do you want to do tonight? I don't know. Want to get some sushi? Yeah, sure. You go to a restaurant. Yeah, you are get we, sushi. Are we going to spear, spear fish? The, spe- no, spear we're not going to spear the fish. fish. No, no the, those days oh, are over. Oh, 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 I'm just oh. a guy who makes wine. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, we're in Sonoma. There's three restaurants. We got the same one we went to last week. Or, <laughs> yeah, or the new one. Yeah, so he's screwed there. And then the other thing is, because of the way girls operate, they're watching the show as it's on, just getting mad about, like, I thought you said you didn't like Courtney. Or yeah. I thought you said... I mean... I thought you said he didn't like Nikki. Sure seemed like he liked her on the bed. Like they almost should be like they shouldn't allow the girls to watch the show. Well, they they can't allow the girls to watch the show. It's just it's such an unnatural way of courtship. I mean, like I'm when there's so many times they've said I'm really falling for this guy. I'm really really falling for this guy. Right? Yeah. There's four other women that he's making out with every day. And yeah. in what real world scenario is that allowed? If you're not Mick Jagger. No, like a, a rock singer. Like, yeah, like just imagine like yeah. one of one of your your adult... Mick Jagger. Bad analogy. I would have gotten sure. a lot more contemporary. Well, I'm 64. Maybe three different <laughs> generations ahead. <laughs> sure, sure, whatever. The lead singer for Muse, maybe I don't know something <laughs> something in the last ten years. <laughs> My motorcycle jacket. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, we've got. <laughs> We've got. She's basically saying, in what real world scenario, an adult, a single adult female friend of yours, she'd be like, I'm really into this guy. Oh yeah, tell me about him. What's he like? Oh, well, he's tall. He's got a good job. He's you know, a family guy. Oh yeah, like, um, is he single? It's like, no, he's he's actually dating four other women right now too. And he's out with one tonight. And I think and there and, might be an yeah. overnight suite. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and Dennis from Cat House. You know, it's Dennis, not gonna work. Plus, just, you have Us Weekly. You have Us Weekly digging up like all the bad stuff. Yeah. Well, I've tried to dig up everything on these girls. I've, yeah. I've done. I've done my. I've, I've my my Google tendrils have, have reached pretty far. I didn't get too much. Are you? Do you think we need to maybe change what kind of bachelors they pick? Do we need like a horny bachelor? See, that's the thing about Ben that I have that I, I have to keep reminding myself is on his season of The Bachelorette, he was the boring guy that didn't say anything, and that's why he didn't get picked. I mean, you know, he he got pretty far, but I don't really know why he didn't get picked. But it was really like. When I look back at it, I'm like, why did the producers pick this guy? Like, I think you really need someone who's a boat rocker. You know, you need someone who's going to stir it up. And he's just the, the boring, nice guy. Boring, yep. nice guy finishes last. There have to be real reasons why they do this. Why they ha- why they don't want polarizing, lewd people. Yeah, because maybe maybe people will tune out. I'm sure this Maybe middle has- America. People like us are because we're we're twisted people yeah. who are have moral issues. Like, we... We love when there's twisted bachelors, but yes. if you're in like Kansas City and you go to church on Sundays and whatever, and you like this show, you you're gonna gravitate toward Ben. I think what it is is this has a very high female viewership, right? Yeah. And I think that they don't want a guy who's going to turn off that viewership, because hmm. I feel like if you had just like a, a a real jerk that was the bachelor, I think a lot of women wouldn't look at it and say, "God, I want to be with him." I think a, I think they cast it. In a way where women watch it and say, I would like to be with that man. But isn't it clear that every season the guy should just own a winery or a vineyard or something? It, seems, the, it seems like that's the dream for women. It also seems like this. It seems like being the bachelor, the goal is to get married, but it seems like the best play is to be the bachelor and then get broken up with and then just kind of like While also sow having your, your own oats vineyard. For, t- yeah. for, for 10 years. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah. It seems like you should really use this as an advertisement for your abilities as your single life. While also having a vineyard. Yeah. If my wife ever breaks up with me, I'm taking all of the money that I have left and I'm getting a vineyard. 
I'm going the other way on this. I'm just like, say, hey, I have a vineyard. Vineyard sounds like one of the most boring jobs in the world. Why do women like it so much? But, but you're a farmer. You're, My wife you're, like you're, loves you're, Ben. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like, why do you love Ben? It's like, because he makes wine. He makes wine. Don't it's you like, understand? He makes like, wine. <laughs> yeah. I don't understand what he does. I mean, what is that? Who cares? Like, like I mean, okay, you've, you've dedicated your life to, to creating alcohol. Yeah. Right? And that could be in and you spend most of your time like in dirt and soil and like plants and stuff. It just doesn't seem like a very sort of like sexy gig. It seems like if you had your own vineyard and you were courting a woman and you released this line of wine and you named the bottle after her and you were like, Hey, I have a surprise for you and here's like you could get that woman to do anything you wanted. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Like, yeah. And also, we're going to lope tonight. She's like, fine. You fine. named the wine after me. <laughs> Whatever. You I went to Vineyard and you named the bottle after me. I think the wine like really me. cool for six months. I think the first six months it, of the relationship, like, oh, he makes wine. Well, Come on by. We'll have dinner. We'll, we'll crack open some great stuff we have in the basement. Then, like, year two, you're like, get a job, dude. Why is it cooler than owning a bar? It's way cooler than owning. I think you know what it is? I think it's barriers of entry. I think you need to be kind of rich. I've, I've never looked into starting my own sort of... You know, so it's vineyard. almost like if you own a yacht, that means yeah, you have money. Like, you, I think it's like I think it's like a, a, a rich guy's hobby, like Francis Ford Coppola. It's like it's like oh yeah, he just started a winery. Why? Because he was super rich and he's sick of making movies. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, if, but if you own like a, a sports bar, it wouldn't have that same no, cool see, see, vibe. No, no. See, here's the thing: is, is if you own a winery, you are a uh, a well-educated, sophisticated, wealthy man. If you own a sports bar, you are a a, a eternal frat boy. Plus, you're probably somebody that you're not like, uh, as you said, you're sophisticated. You're somebody who smells wine. You, mm. You're not going to slam wine. You'd be like, oh, look no, at this bouquet. No, this has Ooh. A, it tastes like gunmetal. A little oaky. Some, some fruity some Oaky, fruity interesting. Hints. I like what they did here. I still feel like this is six mm. months away. Like, yeah. he gets sound like a smart Very enough. dry soil. All right, so we both think he's going to take Courtney the model. There's no question about it. What and we, and the big loss here is that Lindsay, who's going to be the runner-up probably, Lindsay... Lindsay. <laughs> With a Z. Lindsay. I think she's pretty fetching. Okay. Even we... my wife's kind of in on Lindsay. Okay. Okay. You're not in this on Lindsay. This is a woman who applies makeup with a fire hose. You have <laughs> like no, a mortician. You have no idea what her face looks like. Uh, are we sure? You have no idea what You're her face looks like. You're thinking bad skin? I, I'm not. I don't. I don't know. She's 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 wearing a mask. The one time you got a little hint of it is when they jumped out of the helicopter into that weird uh, reef uh, lagoon thing. Yeah. They did an interview, a post interview with that, and you got. I think they took off like a centimeter of the of the the foundation that she puts on her face every day. Yeah. And that was the one time where I got a glimpse, and I was like, oh, I can kind of see her face now, but you can't. She wears Kardashian level of makeup. I like it. Well, I don't know. What I think that she's got a nice vibe. I think I'm not a huge makeup guy. I, got, I think she's got a nice vibe to her. Oh, a lot of confidence. Mm, bad speech intonation as well. What do you mean? She she's got this like uh, like she's not confident in what she's saying. Everything sort of ends in a question. Like, uh, I'm good to see you. You've just ruined it, it for me. Yeah, it's just like, I, liked, it's, I couldn't hang out with someone who's always doing that. You know, it's funny that the the female equivalent of wine is when a girl rides horses. Like even Ben was like, Ben, and she rides horses. I think it's really great that she rides horses. Like, what? <laughs> what, so, what, what, what's what do you mean? about that? I think it's weird. Rides horses. Uh, I, think, I think you always have to be wary of the horse-obsessed women. Oh, uh, see, I go the other way. You're in a yeah, car like Maria it. from the challenge. Horse-obsessed. I like it. I like it. The J-Bug and I, back in our bartending days, we we had a whole whole thing about uh, hor- horses with our, with okay. customers trying to find out if they rode horses. Okay. I'm not, I'm not going to ask any follow-up questions about that. <laughs> That's always there a little let's, more. Let's just leave that out there. A little more you liberating. Those kind of girls are a little you, more liberating. You don't have to explain. You don't have to explain. <laughs> I want to talk about KCB. Who we what ha- the fuck just happened? <laughs> All right. Casey, I'll tell you what happened. You're boring. Okay. You're boring. You're 24. You're, you're is, an administrative assistant. And here's your big thing. Here's your big selling point. Okay, like Ben's selling point. I've got a vineyard. Yeah. Um, Lindsay's selling point. I ride horses. Apparently, very effective on Bill and J Bug at yeah. a certain point in their life. Thank you. And, uh, her, and maybe still. Her big selling point. I twirl batons. Yeah. Like that's her thing. Like yeah. she's, she's gone back to that well for the third time this week. I'm a baton twirler. Yeah. It's like that's that's oh. Bill, uh, oh, I heard you're dating somebody new. Tell me about her. What's like? What's her interests? This is gonna sound really callous, but let's let's be honest. It's part of the show. People strategically bring up 
bad things that have happened over the course of their life at certain points to try to win Ben over. Oh, yeah, for sure. I thought she brought up the eating disorder card too early. I would have waited until Final Four. And that's with all due respect to you. It's disorders. a very serious problem. It's, uh, it's, it's hard to joke about. I feel like there's some emotional manipulation when it comes totally to, when it comes to hardships in people's past. And that's, that's, that's not to discredit them or the cards. discount them. I am not but, doing but, either, yeah, but yeah. we've seen it on this show. Um, dead brother or sister, dead re- dead parent, yeah. um, some sort of accident, um, an eating disorder, divorce. Those are yeah. the big cards that it's like – there's always they're not sure when to play it, and it always is like one of those that's at the cocktail party or something. Mm. Can I talk to you? I just want you to know, you know, and blah blah blah, and they spill their beans, and it's a big. They, a lot of it is I have a lot, I have a hard time opening up to people because because of this. Yeah, that's it's always it. It's always some sort of excuse for some behavior as well. And I feel like KCB should have saved that because she should have known. The hometown thing was going to go weird because of her dad who doesn't drink, and she's bringing home a guy who owns a winery. That's yeah, yeah. And another part is is the what, mom. Were, her, what were the ads that her dad was going to like Ben, the the winery guy who's dating twenty five women when he doesn't drink, and he's dedicated his life to serving people alcohol. Who lives across the country? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then dad's the, going, oh, this sounds great, Casey. Not only that, twenty four year old. Oh yeah, I've heard about this show. Yeah, this is the one where people get engaged, they immediately move in together. I'm not cool with that. Yeah. It's like, okay, so, so let me just tally this up. I've probably spent one-on-one with your daughter five and a half, maybe six hours of my life. You want me to get engaged to her, mm. not live with her, and then really just dive in when we get married. That doesn't sound like a recipe for success. No. No. It, it was, really doesn't. Well, about halfway through that date, it was a matter of time. For sure. Because initially, Nikki was, Nikki's head was in the chopping block because, again, the divorce thing. Yeah, I thought, I thought she was gone. Yeah. All right, let's switch shows. All right, I'm in. Uh, Jersey Shore. Okay. You don't now, watch this show. You don't even watch this show. I stopped watching. That's fine. Now, I was watching season two of the Jersey Shore. <laughs> what? You went throwbacks? I went throwback Shore. Throwback JS. <laughs> what are you doing? Where are on you uh, MTV. This? I just stumbled into an episode, and it was like single Ronnie and... And it was a uh, pretty <laughs> early situation. Was it a freak at? And I was thinking, Your like, weekend television habits are so strange. I just stumbled into it. Last weekend, you said you watched Boogie Nights twice in a row. Well, I did. Well, it was, it was twice in two days. Twice in two days. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Well, the second time I was playing Temple Run. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> but uh, what was I talking about? You threw me Jersey, off. The, the, oh, Jersey Shore. Just reviewing Jersey Shores from three years ago. The show was more fun, it was a better show. It's I like the show, people yeah. more. They were less aware of the camera. Situation wasn't a freak. Mm. Dina wasn't involved. I think Dina's ruined the show. Dina's the real reason why I'm out. I'm just grossed out by her. I'm grossed out by Dina. I'm not grossed out by Dina. It's it's for me. It's just the novelty's worn off. They just haven't. The, the they made too many episodes. The the show is is be, the problem with the show is its own success. They have no reason to change their habits. They have no reason to get better. And they're getting lazy, and the show just is the same thing over and over and over again, and I can't even watch it anymore. Well, don't you think the answer would have been to get rid of at least a couple? Sammy and Ronnie is what you're saying. Get rid of everybody. Just give me a new Jersey Shore. Give me seven new people. If you're telling me... If, we said this a year ago, yeah, by the way. Yeah, if Bunna Murray doesn't say, or whoever's doing it, it's not Bunna Murray, you know, whatever productions says, all right, we're looking for a new Jersey Shore... I mean, they're going to have... It's going to look like American Idol. Sally Ann Salsano? Yeah, Sally Ann Salsano. If she comes... She, Terrible. She, does, does Terrible. She <laughs> Sally Ann Salsano. <laughs> yeah. if, if, she, uh, if she said we're looking for the new Seven Jersey Shore, it'd be a great show. It'd be a great show. I think the weirdest thing that's happened with the show is situation has gone from somebody that, you know, is just over the moon about having in my television life mm. to being somebody that I actively dislike and one of the reasons I stopped watching the show. Why do you root against it's the like, situation? Um, I think he's... I just don't think he's he, – it's wrestling at this point. It's just a fake fake personality and a fake character. I find myself rooting for him for some And reason. when he showed his abs and he didn't have the abs anymore, that was it. That yeah, was the that signature was tough. move. That was, that was been tough. It's, he hasn't really uh, had the abs since like season yeah. one. Let's he lost the abs. It. He lost the magic. <laughs> he really did. He really that was did. kind of his calling card. He you really, really Blake Griffin's like, I'm not going to dunk anymore. I'm just gonna shoot twenty footers. There was a there was a woman on the show last week, Paula. Situations like sort of thing, and she beard. She 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 wears she wears nothing, 
She's in the club, dancing around seductively, licking situations now lack of, of six pack. Mm. And just like is is you know, she's not his one pack. Yeah. She's she's not something that, that you would bring home to mom, we'll say. And there was I was looking at her and I was like, Wow, she's probably too good for the situation. Mm. Like I feel bad for her if she has to settle on the situation. Ugh. It's a t- it's a tough look. Well, let's just move on. There, yeah. Is the show over? This is it? Or they'll bring it back again? There's, there's no reason not to bring it back. Just from a, a purely financial standpoint. Because it's getting like 8 million viewers yeah, still? Yeah, there's just no reason not to. They're just going to ride it into the ground until it's I want to like Jersey Shore. I don't want to no, be the don't. person who's like, oh, no, I used to like that show, but now it sucks. Like, I really just don't like watching it. Like, I feel as I'm watching it, I'm bored. I start doing other things. Like, it can't keep my attention. They, I just feel it's like burned me out somehow. Lazy producers. Like, yeah. they, you're trying to tell me they can't go on a vacation somewhere. You're trying to tell me there's only two nightclubs. They go to two different nightclubs. That's it. They I think karma is the same. Janky. Same issue the Hills had. Just embrace the fame. Stop pretending you yeah. guys have to work in a t-shirt shop. Exactly. You're all freaking famous. It's, like, they, they, what they, reality are we living in that you're working in a t-shirt shop? Yeah, exactly. What, yeah. Oh, what we're, reality we're is this? We're late for work. We're in trouble. Oh, like, no. oh yeah. You make five million yeah. a year. What are you talking yeah. about? And you know, behind a camera, there's 500 people just gawking. And yeah. you know, there's at least seven security guards just surrounding them, making sure that they don't get approached. Freaking, LeBron could walk into the Jersey Shore and not be as famous as freaking Dina. Yeah. So. I, th- I honestly think if you if you print out a picture of LeBron James, you print out a, a picture of Snooki, and you traveled the globe and you asked 500 fully random citizens of Earth, who's who? I think Snooki gets as many, if not more, recognition wow. than LeBron James. I can't wait till the 20 years from now, People Magazine spread to see how fat she's going to be. I think she's actually be a full circle. I no, I think she'll. Be, I think no, I think she's going to be more oval. More wide than high. Oval, okay. Sure. Yeah, for sure. Let's move on, uh, because we got to talk about the challenge. I'm really upset. I'm really upset What's the problem, about buddy? this season. What's the problem? Really upset. What's the problem, Billy? Uh, a little birdie told us that they've toned things down this year in the challenge. They don't have n- nudity, no blurkles anymore. They don't show set. They don't show a lot of the debauchery that's become a signature part of the show we, because they have the 12 to 17 like... audience that they're worried about on MTV, the Teen Mom audience. And for for the person who made that decision, I'd like to extend my middle finger toward you. Yeah, for sure. And it's, how it's, is Jersey Shore not falling to that? Jersey Shore's on. It was on at eight o'clock yeah. on Sunday morning. And this also, show's disgusting. If you're making shows for the 12 to 17 audience, you know what shouldn't be on that list? Teen Mom. Right. That's probably the last show you want to show to hate that audience. Mom. Yeah, I hate, I hate MTV. I'm really mad at MTV. You love MTV. No, I'm really mad at MTV. That not breaking into the Whitney coverage when Whitney died was unbelievable. It's, what it's, channel it's, are you it's, it's at that no point? It's no longer the MTV that, that we I, Apparently. It's not what even, is it it's now? It's not even close. Kurt Loder should have been there. I, uh, what, ch- what are they then? Where's Gideon Yago? What is the him? channel? What, are, what, is, what is their mission statement? What is MTV? <clears throat> is it Spike? What is it? No, it's, it's, it's Reality Show Network. Basically what it is. So then just merge with VH1 and make one network. big powerhouse of reality shows. And, and I want my pants back or whatever that show is that they're constantly Oof, promoing. I tried. I tried to. I like the girl. I tried. I like the girl. I gave it eight minutes. I like the girl. I like the girl on that show. Very witty, snappy dialogue. Snappy dialogue. A little too snappy. It's, it's, I like the girl. I think the girl's got a good character. She's mm. good. But I, I, here's, here's the thing I want to... I don't... I, don't, I want to talk about the challenge a little bit. It's, it's too serious. It's like... I don't need to see 30 minutes of the actual challenge. I don't care anything about the actual challenge unless they're spelling stuff. Right. Like, unless, like, they used to really, they used to, the producers, I feel like, would sit around a table and be like, how can we really just humiliate and embarrass these people this time? And also, people willing to be humiliated and embarrassed, which is a key part of this. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was all in good fun. People that wanted to be embarrassed. It was yeah. all in good fun. And now they're like, all right, like, how do we kick this up a notch physically? Yeah. And it, it's just not, it's not doing it for me. And the and the the challenges themselves, they really did a good job with the the trivia spelling challenge. That was excellent. That was an excellent episode, and I really enjoyed it. And it ended up with them getting shot, right? Like shot off. Yeah, a they got mountain, catapult, catapulted off. Spelling of wrong, go flying into, into like a scary looking lizard. And you had to do a flip basically, or yeah, else you broke and, your and neck. Anisa's face exploded. It was awesome. Yeah, it, was it was awesome. Great. It was awesome. Yeah, I like that one too. You got a question for you? Well, hold on though. I I think they made him. A, if you're going to do this where somebody screws up and the couples get voted off or somebody gets hurt, and I have very bad planning. you got to have, like, the three extra couples. And it's just awesome. We should be able – they should be in the house but just not performing the challenges. Like a bench player. 
but they should be in the house. Like just getting drunk every day, trying to get people see, drunk, trying to start here's fights. The thing is, they don't want that anymore. Like I don't understand what's wrong. What's wrong with getting these people drunk and making television out of it? That used to be the formula. Well, here's the here's. See, when we're running a television network someday, the move is to start the rival league, and you try to lure them over and offer them a little more money. Be like, oh yeah, yeah, MTV sold you guys back. You guys got to come over to us. Jim with two ends. Same, we're gonna be in it. Yeah, Jim with two ends. You're a starter, Jim yeah. with two ends. What do they pay? A bench player. What do they pay show? you to go on the show? Five, five grand in expenses? Oh, we'll we'll yeah. up it to fifty. Yeah, for sure. You're in. Oh, they don't. Oh, get, you get to drink as much as you, you want. Get, oh, they, oh, you just get beer and wine in your house? Yeah. <laughs> We've got crystal meth and heroin. <laughs> Come over to our network. All you need to get is you need to get uh, the big five. You need to get bananas. You need to get Kenny and Jen, two ends. You need conflict. I think you need Wes. You need Paula. You need and you need Wes. Wes. You'd be like, you, we want to build our new league around you five, and everyone else will come because you're it. I think that'll be good. Spike TV, where are you? Yeah, are they are owned you, by MTV? No. They're not owned by Viacom? I don't know this for a fact. I don't believe so. I think Spike's owned by Viacom. Yeah, maybe. There's got to be some challenger that can challenge MTV because right now they're basically they're saying... Come, come, take our territory. They're not protecting their corner. You protect your corner on reality. You protect your reality corner on reality. I try. I try. You don't like when anybody reacts to reality. <laughs> no, no. MTV's not protecting their corner. They're not right protecting now. their corner. And I, and I also, I think they make them sign pretty ironclad agreements. If that, if that one that leaked about the real world, like they've got, like if you go on the real world, let's say I go on the real world right now. And then 40 years down the road, I invent the cure for cancer. And someone wants to like make a movie about my inventing the cure for cancer. Yeah. MTV somehow owns my life rights because oh. I went on the real world. Like They sign these crazy contracts. We got to get The Miz in here to talk about this at some point. The Miz was on the show when it was like... The challenges were, you know, you have to lick off as much hot fudge off your partner, off your partner as you possibly possible. can yeah, in I mean, two was, minutes. There were like really bad, like porn plots. Is kind of how yeah. they started. It was, it was really good. It was, it was stupid. Remember that we, you were going down one of your YouTube holes. And you found uh, CT and somebody have to eat a bunch There's of a, ice I was cream. at a YouTube bender. Yeah, you yeah. found a YouTube bender doing a very yeah. dark place. Where they were sitting around basically on like a a merry-go-round type of thing, and they had to eat a bunch of ice cream and then sit on the merry-go-round and not throw up. Yeah, like those are is, the days. Yeah, and now what they do is they jump over a, a a little thing and then they duck under a little thing. They jump over and they duck under for and you know for twenty forty minutes. And they've done that twice so far this season. Yeah, it's like really physically debilitating. Some of the challenges. It's just stupid, and they can't drink because they're all serious about their challenge. The steroids that we think that might be happening. There's allegedly some. There might be some performance yes, enhancers. They, they, yes, yes, they, they, they might they might need to get the government it's involved. Like one fantastic candidate this year. Who let's are you, let's who say who about? it is. Allegedly, who? Just somebody on the show is very cut. Okay, okay, okay. Very cut. You do a nice before after. I don't think you should be talking about Robin that way. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fair. Um, I'm ready to switch gears. I didn't love the i I like the X's idea. But the execution of it hasn't been that good. I think um, they've tried to bake in conflict with this um, exes thing and cutthroat. Like, oh, rivals. Like, you're going to be with your best rival or you're going to be with your ex. Yeah. But Stolen from us, by the way, yep, from this podcast. Fair. Yeah. I think that it what it really does is it solves tense relationships more than it um, makes good television. Yeah, it almost seems like you're better off like with your buddy. Exactly, and then then you've got it. Your your enemy buddies, is already best baked buddies. in. Yeah, it's instead of like you're forced to get along with your best enemy, you're probably gonna figure it out. But it's like you you and your best friend against like your enemies. You really need like and every man for themselves thing is good because they form alliances. Alliances are always a big a big thing of the, in these shows. The other one I was thinking was sexual tension season. Okay. Because they have the exes. This one would just be sexual tension. It's somebody you had sexual tension with. <laughs> somebody you had sexual tension but with. But you never consummated it. <laughs> You'd be like, all right, Tyree, you had sexual tension with Jen with two ends. <laughs> never made out with her, right? All right, you guys are together. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> It would be bad. Yeah, that would be pretty bad. Uh, you know, uh, yeah. Worse than Nexus? <laughs> that would be pretty bad. That would be, be worse than Nexus, for sure. So yeah. I'll go with you on that one. Se- maybe two Xs. Sexual attention. What were you going to say? Um, I want to talk about Survivor. All right. Maybe. On my DVR, um, not on my DVR, um, did not DVR, went to On Demand It and the sound was all weird. So I blame Time Warner for the fact that I haven't seen it yet. 
Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm sure that the people of New York, New York City will, will yeah, join, I mean, you no in, join, join you in hating Time Warner. No sympathy. They, um, we took this show out of the, the Fantasy League. Yeah, and we should have. And it's it's under the principle of you are only as good as your last start. Yep. You uh, you my, wrote this. You moved it down to fantasy development league. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's I agree with that decision. Fantasy development league. They they were it was it was a bad show last year, and and what they've they've your big format idea for this show was what, Bill? Hotties versus studs. I think it was stud versus babes. Hotties, studs versus hotties. Through, studs, versus studs versus studs babes. Versus, okay. Whatever. Okay. And uh, they've they've kind of gone that route. A little bit. I have some inside info. Inside info? Yeah, it's, it's a little name droppy. Name drop? I don't know if I want this. It's really important, though. Okay, fine, go. I ran into Jeff Probst this weekend. Uh, okay. We've been hanging out for like five hours now, yeah. and you didn't bring this up. I uh, saved it. You didn't bring this up. You ran into Jeff Probst. Was he wearing a blue shirt? Like a very functional blue shirt? Jeff Probst some, is exactly some... what you want him to be. Okay, he's got a nice demeanor to him. Does he's he just have a happy. Survivor hat on? Big smile. He's got a great looking girlfriend. He's just happy. He's just happy guy. Okay. He's okay. like a host. He's hosty, <laughs> but not like in a in a not in a way that uh, feels disingenuous mm. or fake. Okay. He's just happy. The happy friendly guy. So Sal and I accosted him. Okay. And. We uh, we asked him. Uh, we were talking about the season, and I asked him about studs versus hotties, and he said you actually can't do that idea because the people have to have a certain IQ to make the show worthwhile. And he said the biggest problem with last season was that they didn't have enough savvy, smart people, and there were points in the game when they should have Made flipped moves. the game yeah. and flipped the numbers, but nobody was really smart enough How to see it. How did Coach make it that far? Right. So he was saying you have to have a mix between people that are really savvy, sneaky, and then people that are just like good looking and mani- easily manipulated. What what else did Mr. Prof have? I to thought say? that was really interesting. It is interesting. So they they are constantly trying to find the right balance, and that's why we never have we only have a couple of good looking people on every cast. It's like, but it, but it's a, it's a it's a difficult quandary to have. If I was working on casting on that show, and someone was like, you know, I went to my staff, and I'm like, all right, we just got hired by Survivor to cast the show. They'd be like, great. What kind of people are they looking for? I'd be like, all right, they're looking for people that want to go on television. They don't get paid. They starve themselves. They can't shower or eat. Oh, by the way, they also have to be really smart and savvy. That's a a tough get yeah that's a tough get so the other thing he said was the reason they have three people instead of two was because mean three people and the final in three the yeah because okay. we we're like why don't i just have two and he, and he said uh it actually makes it easier to it's if there's only two sometimes the right person won't win there's three it bounces the right out. person I didn't, never wins that show i didn't totally understand and who's it. the right person i don't know Whoever played the game the best. Whatever playing the game. Playing the, the game. The game. Uh, I played the game with honor. It's a game uh, now. Yeah. That, I, what else? Did, what was he wearing? I want to hear more about Jeff Probst. I don't really remember. I don't remember what anyone's wearing. What was he drinking? I don't remember that either. Okay. How long did you talk to him? 20 minutes. 20 minutes with Jeff Probst? Well, Sal was there too, so he had a lot of questions. What else did you get out of him? I, I, don't, I, I didn't want to talk out of school. I just I was <laughs> passing on this information. Okay, never bring me to a party where Jeff Probst is. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. Don't if do that. If Jeff Probst is on one side and TJ Lavin's on the other side, who do you go after? TJ all day. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You wrote about this in your column. TJ went overboard with You Killed It. Yeah, I don't even understand what he's doing anymore. I think he's trying to ruin our league. I think I think he has his own team. I think he's I think he put a lot of money on his own team in the <laughs> league, and he's 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 cooking the books. Uh, he's killing it. He's killing it, TJ. You he's, killed it. He's been really good this year, though. Yes, yeah. it's great to see TJ back. Oh, what was your survivor thing? Uh, I'm. You so were talking. We talked about studs I, versus yes, hiding. I, so yeah. I have problems with what happened on Survivor. I've, right. So they've split it up into it's like a battle of the sexes thing. So there's females and there's males, and the big gimmick twist is, is that they live on the same beach, right? Now, there are two different camps, women in one camp, men in the other camp. Mm. One of the most important things to having a camp and being in the wilderness, and uh, I don't know if this is really true, but at least it's true on Survivor, is getting fire, right? Yeah. The men build fire. The women then, there's, the, one of the first problems I have with, the, with this, this uh, what happened, is the female camp, there's nine of them, I believe. Okay. They know they're going on Survivor. They've seen the show before, and they can't make fire. Yeah, that's... 
Like, if you know you're flying to wherever in the world in two months and you're going to go on Survivor, do you not spend those 60 days just preparing for every single type of scenario you could possibly run into in the wild? It also seems like you should change your diet about six weeks before and so that when you go there, you're up. not, yeah, you, you got to wean yourself off soda and caffeine and yeah. all that stuff. To I would know every shit. single edible and poisonous berry by heart. Yeah. I would know their Latin names. The fire thing would be the first thing you should figure out, though. Yes, how to make fire. And then, so the women, not they, they didn't even show footage of them attempting to build a fire. They just didn't have fire. Do you think it's weird when they're so cold that they, they uh, basically cuddle, like, they sleep like sardines, basically. Like five of them are all cuddled together. I don't think that's weird at Would all. Would you do that? For sure. I'd have trouble, though. Cause I'd be farting on some strangers. <laughs> I'd feel really bad. I would just apologize a lot. It's pretty weird. I'm an only child, so that kind of thing's like weird to me. <laughs> yeah, it's not, I don't find it that weird. I think you get cold enough, you start snuggling. Like, hey, Glenn, could you get your hand off me? <laughs> and they, they have fire. And then the, they go to the mail camp and ask for fire, and the men will not give them fire. Which oh. I, yeah, it, it became this whole like struggle around the fire thing, where it's like it looked like some sort of like playground game, and, and and the men wouldn't give them fire, which I found really wrong. Is the move just to wait till they fall asleep and then steal the fire? Well, that's exactly what they did. Oh, so they wait till they fall asleep. They walk over with this like semi flammable stick and get it kind of lit, and then try to run away. It, it, it was it was poorly executed. It was poorly executed. Well designed, poorly executed. So, are the challenges they're against each other, the men and the women? Yes. Ah, uh, that's always a recipe for. We've never seen that work successfully. Yeah, that's that's a, the first thing that that my wife said. She was like, "Well, this she isn't really work. fair." Yeah. I'm like, "Oh, they'll do puzzles and stuff." And she's nah, like, it's not no, fair. No, they won't. It's not fair. They won't do puzzles and stuff. It's the same reason why we, the NBA doesn't play the WNBA in the in an All Star game every year. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't enjoy watching that. Right. Eh, maybe I'd enjoy it a little bit. It, it turned weird, though. How many survivors has there been now? 24, 25. It's crazy. I remember the first one. Yeah. I think it peaked, or it came, the ending was like right around the same week the Pacers played the Lakers in the 2000 NBA Finals. I remember like being really excited about having all this TV on. <laughs> Both of them at yeah. once. Lakers Pacers and uh, the Richard Hatch finale. We're all like, we're kind of in the relative ballpark of each other. How much money do you think Mark Burnett's made off Survivor? Or his company. 24 episodes? 24 or 24 seasons, seasons? Something like that. 24, 25. Somewhere in the 20s. The only thing is they don't sell DVDs. Huh. Who buys Survivor DVDs? Nobody. I have no interest in watching... I'm not, unlike you, I have no interest in watching old seasons of reality no, television shows. that's not fair. That's not <laughs> okay, fair. Okay. I just watched a little Jersey Shore because I was like, why did I like this show more than the other show? What, what else happened. do you have written down there? Uh, I, I found some new shows I'd like to talk about. Okay. Let's do that quickly because we're running out of time. Good. Um, the Vanilla Ice Project. What channel is that on? Uh, it's in one of those like channels. With, it's got like four digits, like 1,052 or something. Uh, it It's Vanilla Ice redoing his backyard, and it's awesome. Okay. I'm completely in on Vanilla Ice. Sounds good. So you don't even know what channel it's on? No, it's like a home improvement channel. Some of those, like, do-it-yourself, DIY channel, boom, DIY channel, do-it-yourself channel. So he's, like, trying to lay down tile. He's talking about the, t- the tile pattern that he lays it down with, and he's building stuff. I, I, I fully recommend this show. I was with uh, my friend Daniel and his wife, and we were on Sunset Boulevard, and there's some billbo- billboard for Dance Moms on Lifetime or Dance Wives or Dance, dance Moms. Dance Moms? Yeah. She said that this show is unbelievable. The uh, it's it's I can't watch it on principle a bit like Team Mom, it's it's a little uh, weird. It's like toddlers and tiaras. It's exactly. I don't like, like that, that whole world dancing, either. It's dancing toddlers and tiaras. See, I'm surprised. I thought you would like that. I think if you're a parent, that's when it really turns your stomach. It's it doesn't do it for me. Okay. Just something about kids should be. I think I think it just like like being, going into the army, you shouldn't be able to be on reality TV until you're 18. It's not fair, and yeah. I feel bad for uh, Kourtney Kardashian's son. What's that guy's name? Mason. Bad for Mason. I really like that little kid. It's adorable little kid. Mason was clearly getting paid to be in the show this year. Oh yeah, I heard they didn't thing. show him last year. No, I heard something like, like they actually held out to get him a salary. Yeah, and that's why he wasn't on last year. Yeah. Um, another another thing, really quickly. I know you don't watch the show, and you really should. Mob wives. Mob wives. They're too scary looking. They are not. They're too they scary. They are awesome. The older I lady is too frightening. The mob wives. I'm scared I, of her. I wouldn't say anything negative about these people because you will probably die. Okay. And I just want to say that, that if 
you have not seen Mob Wives, there's a young woman on that show named Big Ange, who is my favorite reality show character of the past two months. Big Ange? Big Ange. Yeah, uh, you got to be big if you're gonna pull off the name Big Ange. Hey, hey, hey. It's me, Big Ange, and I'm over here at the Drunken Monkey, just serving up my cocktails. Ugh. Why do you guys want a problem? I don't understand all of this. I'm Big Ange. All you right. Gotta see. It. What else? You gotta see it. I I want to talk briefly about the Housewives of of Beverly Hills. Of BH. Yes, the Housewives of Beverly Hills. It's over. They had the reunion. I saw. Um, they had this the. I guess it's their equivalent of the S they shouldn't have shown show. Mm -hmm. It was like a deleted scenes type show. Yep. And they had footage of Maurizio playing tennis with Ken, my favorite character. (laughs) Ken, impressive tennis player. Not bad. Not bad. Hey, bravo. (laughs) Put that footage on YouTube. (laughs) For real. I want the whole match. I I will watch that. If someone was like... All right, um, we've got uh, Federer and Djokovic on Channel 4, and we've got Ken, Ken and, and Maurizio. Maurizio on Channel 5. There's no way I'm watching Channel Maurizio 4. Maurizio's going all out in his sport, and it's like, ugh! <laughs> ugh! <laughs> Did you not watch that and say, Ken can play some tennis? Ken is like, he's got that wig on, he's, yeah, he's holding he's, a dog as he's, he's like playing. kind of buff, too. He was good. I was like, Ken's been working out. I can't, I love Ken. Ken I'm in on he's Ken. He's been my favorite for a while. I'm in on Ken. I like the the fact that uh, Brandy, is that yes, Eddie Brandy's Cibrian's the dumped yeah, wife? The, yeah, the, no. <laughs> try to make a run at Ken like two or three times. Like For Ken's sure. like, women find Ken sexy. Yeah. He's holding a small dog. I find Ken sexy. And has an English accent. Yeah, he's amazing. I don't even know what sex Ken is. I, he is he's what a sex is su- Ken? superhuman from the future. You know how from the future there'll be no more ethnicities? It's See, like I there'll think... be no sexes either. They'll just be Kens. We'll all be Kens in the future. It's going to be awesome. Spin off the, those two. Do it right Ken now. Ken and Lisa Vanderpump. And have Cedric kind of looming. Yeah. Cedric. Oh, that's a no-brainer. I, that was my the worst part of the season when Cedric crashed her party. And it was cl- clearly a plant by the producers. And yeah, just it always It seemed is. very phony. And it always is. Now, the other Ken, uh, what's her face? The drunk drunk lady's boyfriend. Oh, yeah. Sketchy yes, Kim's, Ken. Kim's boyfriend, Ken. Kim's yeah, it's just skeevy. There's, it's just great. I have the, the He's so scary. Opposite reaction to that. Ken like Ken. that I have to the other Ken. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's like, oh Ken. yeah, like Ken, Ken with the dog. I'm like, oh, that guy's awesome. I want to hang out with him. I bet he was like a rock star back in the '80s. And then this new Ken, you're just like, oh god. Oh no, Kim. Like, like who hires that man? And, who and the sister is like, guy? yeah, I don't, I don't really like her boyfriend. You're like, all right, you're being a jerk. And then you meet him, you're like, oh, oh god. you got three body in front of that. Yeah. What's her name? Uh, Kyle. Yeah, Kyle, Kyle the Kyle sister from Richards. Halloween. I'm in on her. She fought she fought Michael Myers off. Yeah. She was in Halloween, first one. <laughs> that, that means a lot to you. She's one of the two kids being babysat by Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> means means a lot to you. Jamie Lee Curtis sent her to go get the police. Yeah, Kyle Richards. I, th- I think that event started her on this spiral, which now led led to her being in a relationship with Ken, which may or may not have led to her to a stint in re- rehab. Can't we ask Bravo... To give us the raw footage of the Ken Maurizio match, and we could have like announcers announce it, and that it is, seemed like Maurizio trounced him. It, I, I think we. I'd like we to announce it. Both, can I announce both it? Both McEnroe's involved as well. How can I play tennis against Maurizio and Ken? It, I would. There's a very small section of the population that would be into this, but the, that section would be very much into this. I think we should restage that event, like the uh, <laughs> like like the Billy Jean. I have an open yeah, challenge. Yeah. I will find a doubles partner. I challenge Maurizio and Ken to a doubles match. Oh, God, that'd be great. And we'll videotape it, and we'll give the proceeds to charity. There won't be I'm any a- proceeds, <laughs> but whatever they are, we'll give them to charity. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, Ken Maurizio, the Ken Maurizio, it would, it would be probably the biggest, the biggest tennis match since the Agassi Federer. Singles or, or doubles? When they play singles, Maurizio should let Ken use the doubles alley. Is the fair thing to move because Ken is like no. seventy five. Ken is Ken is sneaky mobile. Ken is chasing down balls. I love Ken. Yeah, he is. I liked his uh, I liked his attitude during the wedding too. He got upset that his dog couldn't be involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Dresses, what does Ken do all day? He dresses his dog up in different uniforms. But does he have a job though? Dude, can we? Figure, he has a lot of money. That wedding was like a million money? dollars. Yeah. What's the yeah. source of his money? He owns, seems like he owns restaurants and stuff, but that's just like a passion play. 
Like, I don't know. He, I, like, I, when I look at him, I, if someone said to me, like, oh, yeah, you know that guy Ken on Real Housewives? He's actually Billy Idol. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, I can see that. What job do you want Ken to have? I think he was a record producer. I want him to be a record I producer, too. I think he's a too. record producer. That's what I see him we'll as. Would be a runner-up choice. Yeah. I think, how about former network executive? No. Like in England. They wouldn't like go he on launched a bunch shows. of channels in England. No. You don't like that idea? Mm mm. I think he's a. How he's about concert cool. promoter? Yeah, someone, someone, something to do with music. I feel like, I feel like, like, the, like those British guys are like music savvy and. What if he just owned a production company that produced stuff? That's just, yeah, you know, and that's pretty much everybody. Ken produ- that's Ken every, Bander everybody Pump in Productions. Los Angeles owns a production company that produces stuff, though. Let's be honest. Yeah. I mean, right. can we track him down and, and do some business with him or something? Can we get a lunch? Can you get a lunch with Ken? Uh, listen, I again, I w- want to play tennis with him and Maurizio. <laughs> All right, let's go make that well, happen. Maurizio was like, what, was he like a former Olympic athlete? What was his deal? I don't know. He's some he was sort throwing of super, himself he's some into sort those forehands. Yeah, yeah. See, could you leave Ken alone? Ken's 80. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> pretty, pretty sure you don't have to grunt on the forehands, Maurizio. <laughs> they also, it seems like, uh, I just get a feeling like Maurizio... Uh, the woman like Maurizio. Oh, for sure. The like Kyle might be in trouble every time he's like, "Yeah, I got a business trip." Deep in the back of her head, she's like, "I don't know if I like my husband being out there." My now famous husband. My now famous. Who's like famous for being handsome great husband. to me. Handsome husband. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a, that's a tough one. I'm glad. She should I'm, be careful. I'm glad I'm not married to Maurizio. This is her biggest challenge since she fought off Michael Myers, <laughs> hid in the closet from him. <laughs> All right, Zar. So you have a. We should mention that you have a podcast with uh, Jalen Rose. Yep. On the Grantland Network, yep. which anybody can subscribe to, and yep. I urge you to. We have a bunch of good stuff on there. And uh, and we're going to Orlando this week. Look forward to it, buddy. All right, buddy. Talk to you soon. Target the sound off. Whoa. Thank you for downloading the BS Report with Bill Simmons. Too much fun. Check out more podcasts at the iTunes Music Store or at PodCenter at ESPNRadio.com. Peace out. With all the witty sports and pop culture commentary, it seems Bill forgot the biggest news of all. <clears throat> to celebrate Leap Day, Subway is giving away a free, freshly baked cookie of your choice with any purchase February 29th only. So come in for a drink, cookie, bag of chips, or even any $5 footlong on the last day of February and score a delicious cookie absolutely free. Mark your calendars, because this sweet deal is one day only, February 29th. Subway, eat fresh.